Okay, hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of The Bandit Show. Um, in this, we're going to talk NFL, college football, whatever is wanted. We're going to have different guests every single week, but this week, I've got Bandit Safety, Charlie Furrest. Say hi, Charlie. Hello. And I've got Bandit's guaranteed first ballot Hall of Famer, Paul Bennett. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> got quite a few topics for this one we've got four we're going to discuss over the next hour or so get as much in as we can fur points all around the way we're going to start it okay. is we're going to start with who we think will have the best rookie season this year coming up and i'll start it with paul i think uh tristan Wirfs. The Tampa Bay, yeah, the tackle. Uh, they really need to keep Tom Brady upright. He's got loads of people to throw the ball to, and they had a, a weakness on the offensive line, and he fills that yeah. nicely. So, if he has a big season, uh, they're going to do really well with him. Well, I can see, I can <laughs> see the Tampa Bay Bucks doing really well, no matter what. I think they've got the receivers. They've yeah. got, they've just been missing a quarterback for the past four years. They've got it now. Well, they've had somebody who could sling the ball and get loads of yards. He just he'd give it to the wrong team too often. Now they've got somebody who can <laughs> take care of the ball. Hey, and, yeah, uh, for thirty. I mean, it's you know, I mean, the fella can obviously play. Yeah. Just uh, at that level, turning the ball over that often, it, it costs you too often. And they've now got somebody who won't turn the ball over that often. And if he will stay upright because of works in that position, yeah. and they're going to be very, very dangerous. I mean, there's all kinds of lipid. Like Joe Burrow, I think eventually will be really good. Yeah, but I feel like, like the great quarterback, yeah. uh, college quarterback, tends to go to. Yeah, definitely. Charlie, you got anything to follow up? Um, well, I'm going to differ a little bit, but I'm most excited to see what Isaiah Simmons can do. Yeah, being defensive. Yeah, because he was he was a massive aspect of his team in college. But obviously the level of play is significantly different once you get to the NFL. Yeah. So I'm just excited to see if he can maintain what he's done previously at the new level. Yeah, well he, he fills in that that Do you uh, think is it Derwin James sort of role where he can just play? three positions and they'll uh, chuck him around a bit. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. If you're lacking in defence, you can just go right and get out there. Yeah. He's not set in one role. That, that all around. Will that not count against him, do you think? Well, not having a set role. I think it could, but it also couldn't. It depends how they utilise him the best. Because if you give him a set role and he focuses on that one, I think he'll be highly dominant in yeah. the role you give him. But as of right now, he can fill in where he needs. Yeah. I think it comes down to sort of how much the player wants to play different positions. Because if, if you speak to Isaiah Simmons, he's all up for playing three, four positions. Whereas if you look back at... Oh, yeah, he loves it. Um, Mink Fitzpatrick with the Dolphins, he was getting played three, four positions and he, he absolutely hated it because he wanted to play safety. Send him to the Steelers and he becomes yeah. an easy first string safety ball hawk. He's not. Yeah. I think there's a little that, degree that. in the first season playing multiple positions is yeah. a massive step up for a college player. Uh, and I think he's a great pick. But if they're going to play him in numerous positions and moving about an awful lot, that's a lot of learning well, for a brand new player. He'll probably end up sticking to that sort of outside linebacker and he'll maybe drop to a safety every now and then. But I suppose once he's... I think, I think the outside linebacker... Moving around. I think the outside linebacker will be his primary position, but the aspect that he can drop or he can come down and put some more pressure in, it's just going to add that extra element to the needs in that current situation, like in the game. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and they need people to cover these tight ends that they've got these days, don't they? So somebody big enough to bring them to the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. somebody yeah. mobile enough to take on your Kelsey's and your well, that's, and that. that's the thing. He's going to end up playing George Kittle twice a year. So if you can wrap up George Kittle, easy. Yeah, yeah. You've done your job. Yeah. That's, and, that's, that's, that's what that's it's for. Because he's such a big physical man, he is difficult to kind of wrap up. But Isaiah Simmons is all up for that challenge because yeah. he is just as physical and he's just. So I think the fact that he can do yeah. the multiple jobs will be a big benefit. Okay. All right. So I have dipped into the QB pool. So why not? Um, a Dolphin QB. It is definitely not a Dolphin. <laughs> is he, is he just, but I am wearing a shirt. It is Justin Herbert. Big six yeah, I'm to out of Oregon. I think Rose Bowl winner, Pac-12 winner in his second year, a real bounce back. And I was checking his stats. He has college passer rating of 153.1. Like, mm. That's just insane. He's got a huge arm and he's really athletic. I feel like if you watch the Rose Bowl, whenever anything went wrong, he'd scramble and score a touchdown. It's not like it was like as soon as they take the reins off him and they don't just keep him in the pocket, which I feel like that's where he'll struggle in life. If he's allowed to be a bit more free and do what he wants, then... Yeah, the days of the pocket passer are just going, aren't they? You don't... You Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, yeah. Roethlisberger, stand back there. You are finding teams are getting faster, so they're losing a bit of size in some ways. But if you can move your quarterback around, you don't need to have a great pocket, do you? You can just move your pocket and move your QB around because yeah. they can escape. Well, I feel like the whole thing is, because Joe Burrow is a better QB prospect, I'll say it. But... Joe Burrow's going to go to a dysfunctional organisation and he's going to have to... It's team. probably going to be a few years before he has a winning season. Let's just be honest. Um, whereas he goes to the Chargers. Joe, uh, Justin Herbert goes to the Chargers, already built, set to win. They've just upgraded their whole line. Good defence, great receivers. It all looks up for him. I can yeah, he's got the he's got the uh, not a man away. He goes to the, he goes to the charges with the complete package already being laid out in front of him, which is the big head start he has over the road. Definitely. Um I can see charges Only- scraping in that seventh while that seventh position for the playoffs, which is new, but they are in a division with Denver and Kansas, so it's it's gonna to be tough. Denver Denver have done a lot of rebuilding this yeah. year. They yeah, really, yeah, and that's the problem sometimes. It's timing your charge because you tend to get so long, don't you, with a yeah. window of opportunity. And it's if you can't get out your own division because you're in the toughest division in the game because the Raiders won't be any slouches. No, I can see the Raiders giving a bit. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't. I feel like it can go either way I feel like if we're seeing I feel like we might see two playoff teams from the AFC West which definitely very easily but I think Chiefs have got the same roster and I can't see them slowing down and then Denver or the Chargers could No I actually had Justin Herbert written down as well uh, for the same reasons he's going to Chargers who've already got everything he could need all around him all he has to do is step up to the plate because um, if you look at people who've done it in the past, I mean, unfair comparison, but if you look at Aaron Rodgers, when Rodgers stepped into Green Bay, that was a championship-ready team. Yeah. yeah. And they won. And again, as much as Mahomes is great, that is a championship-ready team, and they've already won one. So it's all lining up, and he could have a great few first years. Yeah. Yeah, like you say, he has got the weapons. 
yeah. in place around him. If he can come in, if he's not restricted, and they basically say, go out there and do what you do, then I, th- I think he could have a very, very good season. Um, anyone got anyone else to add to this topic? Yeah, I might be a bit biased. I might be a bit biased. Uh, but I'm very excited to watch uh, Clavion Jason play for the Jags. Yeah. I am very excited to see that because he is a very dominant player. He is very, very up for it. And I think he brings an element that we will need after recent things such as players going and internal drama and uh, front office, you know, being a cancer to the team and but he's coming in and if you've seen anything he's put on social media he is so excited uh, he put a video on yeah. uh, Instagram and he literally wakes up in the morning goes downstairs walks out his front door and just screams Duval as loud as he possibly can he is very very excited to come and play and I just can't wait to see what he brings cool. yeah Paul I mean, obviously, being a Redskins fan, I like the, the pick of Young. Yeah. Uh, he's gone to probably the strongest unit on the team, which will help him so that they won't be able to... If they do double-team him, then the likes of Sweat, Payne and Allen will do a lot better. Uh, but we're some distance away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll, chuck in, I'll chuck in a defensive player, and I do like Jeffrey Okuda. Yeah, mm-hmm. great cornerback, and he's stepping into. It's always a position that needs filling, and whenever you find a star cornerback, you people keep hold of them. Look at the the Patriots with Stefan Gilmore; they have really? never letting him go. Just people like that. If you've got a good one, you're keeping him forever. Well, you never let him go unless you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously. Yeah. Not, <laughs> we just like, we just let everyone go. All right, so um, we'll move on and we'll go to uh, who, we be, who we believe the teams that are going to progress the most for the next season. And I'm going to flip it and we'll start with Charlie. Uh, well, I think um, if you do what is necessary and you get your foot in strong, I think the Finns will come out quite surprising this season. Yeah, I feel I feel like I don't if want to comment do, on it too much, being very biased towards it. <laughs> oh no, no, come, comment away, comment uh, away. No, I feel but like I think if if I made some big improvements after this last season, season you know, yeah, yeah, and after last season you know what you need to, fix, and I feel like you've gone out and fixed it, or at least worked towards fixing it. Yeah. You know, so I'll I'll just jump. Get out of the division. Yeah, I think this season, especially with the Pats being in the situation they're in now, yeah. I think if you take the right steps, then you will 100%. You, you'll shock people this season. I feel like our defence is going to be the strong point. Um, just based on, we, you know, we signed Shaq Lawson, great pass rusher, Carl Van Noy and the linebacking core and then we've got Byron Jones and we've still got Xavier Howard at corners you know and then college. don't know how much he's going to play but he can be a great safety in the future yeah it's a great it's a solid unit yeah Paul they move Patriots Patriots defenders moving teams they normally are better when they go back to the Patriots after they're done with it, uh, it's just the way that but he gets the best out of those players. I think the Dolphins should do a lot better, much better, uh, and that's even if they don't, if two is not ready to go at the start. Uh, I do like what Broncos have done. Yeah, I've got Denver down myself. Yeah, yeah I really have. NFC wise, I'm trying to think what's going to be changing. I can't really see huge changes in that. Yeah. Was, the, the good teams seem like they're going to still be good. And it's whether somebody yeah. falls away rather than anybody 
has done massive amounts because you, your cowboys and your eagles are there, aren't they? And Viking saints are all still there. And, I mean, if Roethlisberg is back to full fitness, then the Steelers are always competitive and they'll have a very, very good quarterback back. To, to agree with you on the, on the point of Denver is Drew Locke looked good end of the year. End of the year, mm-hmm. uh, he might have finally solved the quarterback issue. Um, new running back, Melvin Gordon. You know, Melvin Gordon's quite a tough person. If he can go and get you quite a few yards and then bust a hole straight for Philip Lindsay, who's fast and can catch out of the backfield. Um, again, and was Jerry Judy. Luke's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. oh, he's a big impact. They, they go on yeah. about quarterbacks, but the, the like I said, they were locking. A lot of the time, there's 32 is and the 32 quarterbacks in the league. And each one of them can play. And a lot of the time, it's having the right offensive coordinator for the right quarterback. Because look at when uh, Baltimore yeah, and what they've done yeah. with Jackson. But it's just that they built around and call the right plays with the right packages, right system for the quarterback because if they try to make him play play like Peyton Manning they'd have nowhere near the success and it's, it's getting your offensive coordinators on the right page for me yeah okay, um, yeah I'm gonna one that might surprise a few people which is I've got the New York Jets and it hurts my whole my entire body to say it but Sam Darnold went seven and six last year with a garbage O line and the had mono. You know, um, and that they've got they've just fixed the O line, done a really good job at drafting. Um, Le'Veon Bell should be able to get more production done with a better O line, um, and that defense still looks good, and I can't fault it. I feel like they'll take a big leap this year and they could easily finish second in the they, year. They need to take a big leap. Yeah. A team that doesn't need to take a big leap is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. They're very strong. He's a cracking coach. Uh, and the building. It's just it's Buffalo yeah. Bills, isn't it? <laughs> Charlie? I know a few people will be upset by that comment, Paul. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I agree. Denver are going to do bits because they've done bits. Yeah, rebuilding. Uh, Jets, I see where you're coming from. Uh, the only way is up for them, really. Well, I mean, they were like seven. They've took definitely a down. Yeah, they were seven and nine when they finished, and they've took that and they've. Improved upon it, yeah. And what we can't go away from as well is the richest team in it. If you like the Chiefs, maybe you've even got a little bit re- richer with adding a luxury pick of a first round running back. Yeah. You will take the pressure off Mahomes and maybe allow them to uh, to not have to throw the ball around quite as much. Yeah. I see any running back that goes to the Chiefs, you've just got to look at them as another weapon for Mahomes to throw to, really. Yeah, yeah. He loves them passes out the backfield and they can go for huge yards. The other, the other oh. thing with the Chiefs, just such a fast team. They're all just so quick. Well, you manage to get them a huge gap, don't you, between the safeties, corners, and then the... Uh... Well, the front six, because you're going to be in a five or six DB package most of the time, aren't you, against them? So he takes the top off the defence. So it creates space underneath all the time because you've got to take into account all the speed that they've got on the outside and the fact that you've got Kelsey then running seam routes down the middle. Uh, It's called a real vertical threat. You're just trying to defend close to the line is really difficult. Okay, you know what? I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I've not told you to prepare for this question, but I just want quick. 
Who's your Super Bowl winner really early, Paul? Chiefs. Chiefs. Charlie? Well, um, thank you. Was he didn't come down here? I get a bit excited. Um, I'd have to agree just that minute. I can't, they've not got weaker, they've, they've got stronger, and oh, we think, haven't seen I anybody. Think, who, I can't who, think of anyone else who in this off season has got up to the same level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I might be proven wrong once the season starts, but as of now, I don't think there's anyone who can even contest. I, th- I think Seahawks. If it weren't for cluster injuries, I feel like they'd have been in the Super Bowl. Nah. <laughs> 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 good. They're good, but nah. I mean... You've you've got to think Russell Wilson almost beat Green Bay single handedly. Um, yeah, but Russell one man is not once. They were an inch away from beating them the second time. I feel like. Yeah, but if they'd have ran it them years ago, they'd have had a Super Bowl, wouldn't they? <laughs> so you, know. mm-hmm. you can say. <laughs> And um, changing topics, we're going to go to the most regressed team in the next year. And um, Steelers, for me. Steelers are an easy regression team. I feel like, I just feel like they haven't improved in any way. As much as Tomlin got them close to the playoffs, Big Ben's just been injured. He threw a ball and his arm broke. That's not like... <laughs> That's not... Damn it. He's old... Um, he doesn't train in the off season that well. We have no OTAs. It's just I just can't see them doing it, especially when I think Cleveland have got better. I think the Ravens have got better in their own division. It's mm-hmm. going to be very hard for them to get a playoff spot. I do see them going seven and nine, eight and eight, and pushing, but. It's going to be a tough season for the Steelers, I feel. I'm not sure. It's if Roethlis, they played last year with no quarterback and still nearly went to the playoffs because they're a well coached side, really, and they play to the strengths. I mean, some of the quarterback play last year was just, you didn't have to defend deeper than 80 yards from the line of scrimmage because yeah. it just wasn't going any deeper than that. Uh, and at least with if he's got if he comes back at seventy five percent, they're going to have to defend the field again. So <coughs> I'm not sure. I did, I'd always be wary of saying that a Tomlin team is going to struggle because it had really rated. Oh, I I agree with you. I'm not going to win it. I'm not going to win it. <laughs> but I, I just felt like they might just sort of struggle in a few games. I feel yeah. like early in the year, if Big Ben's not ready. They could struggle. Um, I feel like they'll lose to the Ravens twice and they could easily split with the Browns. Yeah, the, the thing though with regression for me is if they're seven and nine, they've stood still. Yeah. You're looking for a team to go from six, seven wins down to two wins, aren't you? It's, it's not having two years in a row, not living up to expectations. Okay, I get it. Well, you're looking for falls from grace because you'd look at, say, Carolina. Yeah. But starting points pretty low. So they can't, re- although they, they're probably going to regress, they can't regress that far because, so you, for me, you're trying to find a playoff team from last year who are going to bomb out. So I, feel, I, don't know. I feel my regression point is that they're probably not going to push for playoffs as much as the. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I I'm with you there. I think. Unless Roethlis comes back on fire, they probably are looking at seven, nine, eight, and eight because they're in a tough game. They've got the Ravens, haven't they? And I potentially, because we say this every year, potentially resurgent Browns. Yeah, I mean we get burned by them every year now, but they have got better on. They have got better on the all line, and they've still got a good defense. That if it shows up, then. Yeah. 
This is going to sound daft, and it's probably not going to be aggression as such because they will still win a lot of games and possibly still make the playoffs. But the Ravens may not quite have the success that they had last year. And the Titans might not have the same success because defensive coordinators will have extra time in yeah. dealing with Jackson. He had a great season and he's a fantastic player. But they're going to start to work out plans. And I, I could be totally wrong because he, he is that good. But if they can work, if they can contain him better, his effectiveness will fall a little bit. And that's as somebody who are rated in the top two, three quarterbacks in the game. Yeah. Um, I do have one other team. Um, and I have the Rams. The Rams did, I know they only finished 8-8 eight and eight last year, and it doesn't seem like much of a regression, like they're in a weird, shaky place. But the, they still looked all right last year, and they had no O-line. Um, whereas I feel this off-season has just been too much going on. There's new coordinators all around the board. They lost Todd Gurley, and I know he wasn't at the best of his ability, but he's still big shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, I think it's sort of a make-or-break year. Jared Goff, who I think is a great QB, but they may start looking at alternatives if he can't get them where they need to go. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. There's some teams that potentially are in not bad positions, but yeah. you get the Saints, the Saints, and now they've got uh, the backup quarterback situation has changed because Bridgewater's no longer there. Yeah, um, he was a very good backup quarterback, uh, and it's now Winston. So, would if anything happened to Breeze as it is? Happened last year, and he's that little bit older. They run the risk of some major football, but there's a lot of they've got to take an injury at the quarterback position, there, haven't they? If they don't, then they'll be fine. The, the Saints still have loads of talent, um, and they do. At the end of the day, they still have Taysom Hill, and I know he plays all around, but he can still throw a ball. It's not... Yes, he can. He can. But I'm not sure I'd like a, a 14 game stretch out of him yeah. just yet. But I don't know, do I? <laughs> yeah, we're just idiots talking on a screen at this point. It's not like yeah. that was the plan going in, so it's uh, well. Yeah, so Charlie, who's done the most preparation for this part, let's let's go. Yeah. Well, for me personally. Uh, Colts. Yeah. They suffered last year after look left went from ten and six to seven and nine. Um, they need the replacement for Preset, who let's be honest, he wasn't that good filling the shoes. He got sacked multiple, multiple, multiple times pick sixes, you name it, everything. And I don't think they've done that much to improve in the off-season. Mm. I do feel like Rivers might have at least a year of resurgence behind one of the better all lines in football. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's compared to where other teams, purely because another factor of it as well, is they've got to contend with the other teams in the division who have done bits to him and yeah. are building better teams. Yeah. Um, I feel like the Titans are going to be the big obstacle for that division anyway. If, yeah, yeah. I fully, yeah, I fully agree. The same strength as last year. Yeah. 
But I think the Colts, purely because of where they stand, where they are in the division, what the division is, I think their team is going to struggle this year. Yeah. I think teams who retain the coaching staff and the quarterback do have an advantage. Uh, I mean, Rivers has got quite a bit of experience with Frank Reich, hasn't he? Yeah. So he'll get that because they've worked together before. But teams who've changed coach or have changed quarterback just for the current situation may may have the first three or four weeks where they find it more difficult. And if you get off to a poor start, mind you, yeah, if you get off to a poor start, you're struggling, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your next one, Charlie? Um, I think everyone's thinking it, Pat. Just see what happens with them. Everyone, everybody's thinking it. Everybody who's a fan of American football is thinking what's going to happen with the Pat. Hoping. <laughs> yeah. Better because you just it. know, don't you? He'll just have a yeah. plan to play some th- single wing offence with a load of running backs behind and he doesn't need a quarterback anymore. Yeah. And he'll win the division because he'll just do yeah. something crazy. <laughs> well, everyone's thinking it. It's Mr. Patriot has gone. Well, they're not. Obviously, I don't think Jared Stittles the future of the Patriots. And if he bombs out, do you really want to risk Brian Hoyer? Like, um, they lost. Very capable backup. Yeah. He did lose to the Dolphins when they were 1 and 7 last year, so that's like. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's go to the point of they've let go of a kicker, a really good kicker. They've not replaced him. They've lost. All linemen. They've lost the two best linebackers, and they need a quarterback basically, and they've done nothing. In one off season, that team's fell apart. Yeah, and I, I do think Belichick's been smart when he trades off assets. He's just saying, "Give me draft picks and give me." He draft doesn't picks. lose trades, does he? No, I mean, he's no. He I don't think he's a great drafter, but we'll have to see next year which position they're in. Because look at his record speaks for itself. As long as you get the players, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, he picks up other teams. He sees things like Noy and Noy that nobody else saw and makes them into a great player. And then when he's had enough of them, he lets them go. And it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up back there, like Collins did. Yeah, I can I can see it, but I feel like Cal Van Noy left to be with Brian Flores, who was because Brian Flores was the coach of the linebacking core. You can give Belichick credit for recruiting the guys, but Brian Flores definitely helped that linebacking core along. Yeah, I agree. But I'm, I'm with, with the change up in the packs. That is one division I am looking forward to seeing. Yeah, it's wide open and it can go. Yeah, in. that 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 division at the moment is wide open. And it's whoever decides to jump in and claim it. Yeah, the Bills have most con- continuity. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I think the Bills are the current looking front runners of that division. Yeah. I think once we get into the season and people start playing, we might be in for some surprises. And the, the Bills have the most continuity. The Dolphins have added more, but have less time, unless this crisis clears in no time, which it won't. Yeah. We'll have the time to get them all to gel together quickly. Uh, yeah. And they'll have to spend the first couple of weeks of the season finding that footing. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be an extended preseason. I can I can imagine that preseason might might either not happen or be very short this year. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the whole thing we say two games, two games preseason tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that where you're getting your players in and working playbooks with them and that. 
it's it's not going to happen the same, is it? Yeah. No, it's it's all done over video conference now. You can't really assess someone yeah. physically, which is tough. The, the reason the Redskins signed uh, Allen from the Panthers was he knew the system. So if they yeah. couldn't get Haskins plugged in in time, they had somebody who at least run the system before, who would probably do better because he knew what was going on than somebody who's just given a ball and all new terminology and told to crack on. Yeah. Ian, do the thing. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't practised. You never practised last year. <laughs> well, then you got more? No, I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll leave it there. I'll yeah. leave it there. Yeah. Um, and now the one that we were all looking forward to. <laughs> Personal opinion on best QB in the National Football League. Yeah, let's start where we started on the first topic, Paul. If we're going to do this, it's which is the quarterback that's most likely to have success in all 32 teams? Yeah. Which is the one that you would want to go in to save a game, to close out a game, in a playoff game, whatever? <laughs> you know, because um, whatever offense they're running, you know, it's, um, for me, Mahomes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's mobile yeah. enough, he's such a leader, such a competitor. They're never out. You, you've seen them twenty odd points down, and you just think it's not enough. I know they're a good side, but it's just yeah. not enough. And they yeah. they only have to play well for ten minutes, and they'll score three touchdowns. And it's just, he's just everything about him is brilliant. Yeah. And I yeah. I think you look at Lamar Jackson, and he's brilliant. But I don't think he could run the Tampa offense like Mahomes would run the Tampa offense yeah. with a straight um, drop back pocket present. I don't. I think Mahomes would do that slightly better. Mahomes um, and Chiefs are the first team I think I've ever seen where they could be at the fifty-yard line, and you feel they're in scoring range. The red zones on your yeah. forty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't defend against it. Gets the ball. He gets the ball when they're in the red zone. Yeah. There's that constant fear because you don't know if he's going to take a five yard check now or just skim it and go. Yeah, his, his arm angles. It, it, it doesn't matter which way his shoulders are pointing almost, does it? No. You can't read his shoulders because he'll. It, you can't read his eyes because half the time they're not even looking where he's throwing. And it's just the keys that defenders take off him. They can't take because his head's pointing one way, his arm goes another, and they just—it's so hard to get a jump on a ball because he's just set up to so be different, and then he'll run off with it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we're seeing coming through now with Alexa and Mahomes and Jackson and Watson—it's—it's it's a different position, isn't it? I mean, they tried before with your like see Vicks and your Cunninghams, but the coaches were far too, no, this is how we like to play, this is how we like. Now they're going, actually, this is my quarterback and this is how we're going to play. And you look at Alex Smith. Alex Smith, pocket passer, his leg nearly came off. Yeah. You, know, and it, you, you might as well run your quarterback around because some of the worst injuries they get is when they're stood in the pocket with a planted leg and somebody falls on them. If you're running yeah. and somebody knocks you down from behind, you're just being tackled, aren't you? It's yeah. you're far yeah. less than getting crashed into somebody 300 pounds on your head. If you're stood still and that DB decides, I'm having you, and he decides to run through your head and you're stood still, that it's, it's not going to work out for anyone. Whereas if you're, at least if you're moving, you've got a bit of momentum to take the hit. And you have a decision that you can make, whether you want to lower your shoulder and take him on or slide. Yeah, you know, just a human punching bag in the pocket, just stationary, just waiting for it to come in. Yeah, and when you look at some of the edge rushes they've got now with your bolsters and that, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just roll away from them. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't stand there as a sitting target for them. Just move. Just get out of the way. Yeah. Let them face you. You're, fast. You're as fast as them. So, going short, go. Roll to one side and off you go. 
and it gives them, it also gives you them extra couple of seconds to decide right am I going to throw it am I going to run it out of bounds mm-hmm. yeah I'll um I'll jump in with mine I feel like I'm going to get a bit of stick off you too but oh well probably <laughs> um, because it'll be rubbish for me <laughs> I know what yours is because we actually did, we were discussing yeah. this the other day uh, I have Russell Wilson. Yep. Uh, it's not a problem. Right, I just didn't know because <laughs> you didn't seem to, to mention him, but he is he is one of them mobile quarterbacks. Yes. And he's insanely accurate on the run. He's he's like if you defined Aaron Rodgers into a more mobile person, it's Russell yeah. Wilson. He's an actual born winner as well. Yeah, exactly. He's had was it Eight winning seasons in his first eight years. Yeah. So then, um, the leadership on the guy is incredible. Like I've seen, I've seen you'll see him throw a pick, and there's a flicker, a second where he just he's like, "Damn, I can't believe I've done it." But then he focuses, he's straight back in. Then he's and he's on the next drive. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no, he just. He just lets it go and comes out and fixes it. But, yeah. But he's he's the kind of player who made having your Jacksons and your Mahomes, yeah, and Watsons totally acceptable. He yeah. was the, probably one of the breakthrough players, if you like. Yeah, I, I think he's the. Uh, I think he's one of the like cornerstones of the mobile QB. Yeah. Yeah. Like he started it out. Yeah, we've had them before, but not with his. Passing accuracy, yeah. perhaps. Well, no, no. Being a baseball guy, he knows how to slide. He's not going to get hurt if he takes a run. Um, mm-hmm. Also, being a baseball guy, insanely accurate. I feel like that pass was it Thursday night football to Tyler Lockett in the corner last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something just beautiful to watch. Well, you saw it in your basketball players at tight end, baseball players at quarterback. Yeah. Because now it. The arm angles are just different. Yeah. They will throw yeah. with their arms at strange angles. And no, Wilson's a great player. And then um, Charlie? Go to Minshew. Can't get a sack. <laughs> Too mobile. Shakes them all up. No. Uh, well, we, like I said, we talked about this the other day, Ben. I think in terms of potential, if he can keep up what he started, I think Lamar will be the best QB in the league if he can maintain what he was doing. But as it stands right now, I fully agree with Russell Wilson. Yeah. You can put him in a game at any situation with anyone and go, right, we need this score. And whether he's cross body back turn to you on the move it doesn't matter that pass is going exactly where it needs to be all the receiver has to do is get it unless it's the Super Bowl and you're on the one yard line and then I don't want him passing <laughs> that was then a I'll great take, play though yeah then I'll take anyone else over Russell Wilson but that, that was a great defensive play because he moved that receiver yeah. out to get that as a defensive player I, that oh, it sent me to another level I mean I saw that like, taken. Did you ever see that uh, that bit from the the Patriots where they actually practiced against that play like three days earlier, and they just they would like they couldn't get it right. They were just practicing it and couldn't get it right. Couldn't get the defense right for it. Saw it called in the game and he comes up in the interception. But that well, that's it? a, it's coaching you, because yeah. what, what they didn't do was traditionally what would tend to happen is the defensive side would call a timeout. To yeah. get the ducks in a row, but they knew what they were going to do, and what they did was saw that the Seahawks perhaps looked a little bit flustered, so didn't call a timeout to allow them to settle down and have a good think about it. They let them run with what they had. That was, that was a great coaching decision. Yeah, I think I think another element of that is. You can train something as much as you want. You can rehearse it as much as you want. But once you get into that game mode and you're in game speed, you're in the mentality, everything's completely different. Yeah. It's like it's like a switch and you just press it and everything changes. It's completely different. And that can give you the motivation to 
make the play that you previously couldn't, that you've been training for the past weeks or whatever, you know? Um, I'd say back to your point on Lamar Jackson, though, is I feel like the thing is with Lamar, this season coming up, if he takes another leap, then next 10 years, he's going to keep progressing and he's going to look great. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. If he can, it's yeah. if he can keep it. But because anyone who plays in this year is going to do as much research as they can on Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So First thing last year was a bit of a, he was a bit of a surprise element. Yeah. Maybe, and like you said, teams will be more prepared for it this year. But like I said originally, if he can, that's the main thing. If he can keep it up, yeah, then he'll become one of the greats. Um, I mean, it, well, let's have a look at who we're not talking about in this. And I think, is it nine Super Bowls between them? In uh, Brady, Roethlisberger, Rodgers, all pocket plan passes. Yeah. Now, yeah, but we've had enough, Paul. We've had enough. You can go away. It's the way the league has <laughs> changed, though, isn't it? I mean, you can, you can sort of make a slight argument that, you know, Rodgers at times wasn't a pocket passer when he was mobile and but after two collarbone surgeries and ankle injuries he just doesn't move anymore <laughs> he wasn't any of those guys was it the Watsons and no the thing is, for, for to be one of the great quarterbacks you need to have that extra something like the mobility because if you're on let's say fourth and 12 game on the line I want to know my QB can pull it down and go yeah and not on half in to pass it. It's that extra element that brings it up. I feel um, Roethlisberger, he's, he's too big of a target in there. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care. care. I think you can miss him if you're a defensive lineman. Doesn't matter. You bring him down, you, you've had defensive ends hanging off him and he's still throwing the ball when they're trying to wrestle him to the floor. He's so... He's so strong. I mean, he might be made in Burger King, but I tell you what, <laughs> you bring it, he's a big unit and you're going to have to whack him out and bring him down. Yeah, I love that he's, training video of him just bouncing the pads away, <laughs> throwing them at him. The, ball, the defensive line wasn't great. Yeah. And he had people hanging off him all the time. And he's like one hand in someone's face mask and the other one throwing the ball around. He, he is really, really good. Yeah. This is whether he'll come back to that. That's the, that's the thing with him now, though. Can he keep it up? Can he come back? Yeah, I he's he's, well, think he's better than what, uh, even with one arm, he'd be better than what they've got at the moment. Okay. I, I, feel, like, I feel like we should mention it, because you already did. And if we don't, we're going to get like messages from Patriots fans threatening to shoot us or something. Um, Tom Brady. Um He's he's going to be the last great pocket passer, I feel. Uh, That's the thing. Things evolve now. Yeah. Uh, the, I can see him putting up Peyton Manning in Denver numbers this year. Well, I, I don't know. Cause he, he's got some receivers there, you know. Yeah. He's got some real quality around him there. And he struggled through his receivers last year. and He hasn't gone away. And... He, he loves to play against zone defense. He'll pick a zone apart, and if they can, if that offensive tackle does a decent job for them, and he has some time, he will dissect people still. Yeah. And um, with Evans, and I have no idea how good Grunt will be when he comes back. I, I don't really care because I think his only yeah. units that are that good that he will get the ball to them. It's whether they can stop the other teams consistently. But with Brady still, he's a, he's a good player. Really right. good player. I feel, like, I feel like I can say that now that he's not playing against my team anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, like he is, he is without a doubt one of the greatest QBs ever. Yeah. But like, like, like we started out saying, though, the position of QB has changed. It's not about just standing there anymore. You can't just remain in the back anymore. It is if you can stand there. 
it really is if you can stand though. If if it you have the time, time stand, then there's still a position for it. It's just all the young, exciting guys coming through can do that as well. You can, but if you've you got, got a great line. The O line. You, you, if you've got a great O line, you can still put somebody that in that pocket, and they can still still sling the ball about. I mean, if you think about it, a great O line's not going to do that much these days when you've got teams like San Francisco, and they've got five first round picks running at you. Yeah, he's just stopping working, um, and I feel like yeah, it's got four. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's something that's just going to become. If you like Houston had last year, get yourself an O line that can last you. About mm-hmm. that can just every now and then prevent a sack. Well, look, yeah. look at that can run. Look at what these teams do now. Is if your line's going to struggle, then you run smoke screens. You run the draw plays. You do designated quarterback run. You do things to take advantage of you of your line. You look at what the 49ers do with the line somebody up in the slot and then just pitch the ball to them and they'll run an end around. You you can just do things that are different, that little bit different to to unsettle a defensive line and make them just hang off. And then your own line doesn't have to hold up for ages yeah. because they can't cross the line because if they do, you'll just, you know, you, you run a, a middle screen against them. Yeah. Or a smoke screen to the outside. Just look, put a bunch of formation on one side and throw it to someone and see what they can do. They get four yards, it's good run, that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and you've eliminated yeah. the four first round picks who are in the middle of the park. Yeah. And I have to chase all over the other side to, to have any effect. Um, any last points from you two? Um, just while we're still on the pocket passer topic, I think the another problem with it is if the defensive backs are good and have good coverage, it doesn't matter how good of a pocket passer you are because there's no one to give the ball to. I think you do see it like you're getting faster cornerbacks and teams are playing more man to man. Exactly. So it eliminates the entire point of the pocket passer. He can stand there all day, but there's nowhere to put the ball. Yeah. He's just stood there, like with the ball just looking somewhere and there's nothing open. And that's where I like more about yeah. respect because there's nothing on. Tuck it in. First down. Yeah. Because when they are in the man as well. If the receivers draw them away, all it does is leave the QB more space for the extra couple of yards on the rush. Yeah. Paul? I still like pocket passes. <laughs> even, though I've named all the, even though I've named all the mobile ones as the best players, and it's dead exciting to watch. That's, that's just because Paul is a pocket passer. I was going to say, he only has pocket passes because he is one. Yeah. Stats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Nelson's column moves faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, um, I'll, I'll put it down as we'll end it there and we'll leave it on that one. But um, thanks for being on the first episode of the Bandit Show. And um, right. let's give <laughs> props Bring to the more Bandit more. Show and then we'll um, let's all say goodbye. Yeah.